1995, Car and Driver wrote, This fast, feral, glamorous new car puts Ferrari back on the most wanted list. The Ferrari 355 was the replacement for the unsuccessful 348. And while they have similar basic looks, the 355 was a superior beast in many ways. Apart from growing the 3.4 liter engine to 3.5 liters, the major difference in the 355's V8 engine is the introduction of the five valve cylinder head, which allowed for better intake and therefore a more powerful engine. The standard 348 topped at 300 horsepower, while its predecessor grew to 375. Throughout the years, Ferrari liked changing up what they did with their numbering systems of their cars. So, for instance, in the past, a Dino, a 246, would be 2.4 liters, 6 cylinders, or the 348 was 3.4 liters, 8 cylinders. But for the 355, they made a change in the numbering system, so they went to 3.5 liters, five valves because they were very proud of the new uh you know addition to the engines and so they wanted to put that forefront in the name so everyone knew that they had made that improvement and these cars had more power the 355s were introduced in 1994 and at first they were all berlinettas so they were all coupes then in 95 they came out with the spiders and the targa top which are just the little removable piece kind of in between. It's like a, a mix up of not a full Berlinetta, but not a full convertible either. Uh, and it wasn't until 1997 that they introduced the F1 paddle shifters. And at first it was revolutionary. It was the first time that they had the electronic shifting in one of these cars. Uh, however, nowadays, because F1 paddle shifters are so common, the original stick shifts, the manuals, are much more desirable. So this car being a manual and a spider is a very desirable 355. Now, the paddle shifts in these cars, one of the reasons that they didn't, um, they haven't stayed so popular is because they tend to be a bit lurchy, uh, especially in the 355 because it was the first year of the paddle shift. And even through the 430s and even 599s a little bit, um, they can be lurchy at low speeds. But with the F12, they finally figured out the dual clutch uh, shifting. So it's seamlessly smooth. It took them a while to figure it out, but eventually they did. But the manual shift cars are definitely the hot ticket items in today's market. Ferrari spent over a thousand hours in wind tunnel testing to perfect the perfect combination of awesome body lines and aerodynamics on the 355s. Another thing they did with these cars that was revolutionary was the tops. It was the first time that they had the electronic or the automatic hydraulic tops. And so because they were the first, they were a bit problematic. Uh, a lot of these cars nowadays, the tops don't work. And if you want to fix them, it gets quite expensive. The um, computer to fix them or the computer that goes bad is expensive and hard to find and the hydraulics tend to need a lot of work. So it's always nice when you find a car like this one where the top's been sorted through and it goes up and down like it's supposed to. And uh, how it's supposed to go up and down is a bit funny. Um, there's a lot of kind of jumping through hoops to get it to do what it's supposed to. You have to get in the car, sit down, close both doors, put your foot on the brake, turn the car on, push both seats forward, unlatch the top, push it back a little, and then push the button to have it go down the rest of the way. Um, but when it works, it's, you know, it, it was the first time they had the, the electric automatic tops. So back then, instead of having to wrangle it yourself, having to jump through a couple hoops was, you know, a nice uh, compromise. <laughs> Many cars like the 355 are typically in your normal Rosa Corsa red. So I love when they come in unique and interesting colors like this TDF blue. And the TDF blue is a pretty standard color, but I love it. I, it's one of my favorite colors. Uh, and the dark blue over the tan is just a striking color. So that mixed with the fact that it's a six speed, recently serviced, working top, all that, it ticks all the boxes and makes it super desirable. The Flying Buttress windows started in 1967 with the 206 Dino, and it's that elegant curved glass on the back of the cars that just looks so amazing. It's pretty terrible if uh, the glass breaks and you have to replace it, hurts your pocket and, or your wallet, and also hurts, uh, you know, whoever has to replace it. But 
Uh, it really is one of those styling icons on the Ferraris, and it lasted all the way until 1999 with the 355s before they traded it out for a simpler design. Driving a 355 is a lot like driving a go-kart. They're really low to the ground, they're nimble, and because they're a car that doesn't have all the modern day um, electronics, it doesn't have the dash readings telling you what mode you're in and you know all that modern stuff, it really feels like you're in control. Um, especially when you have a car like this one where it's a manual, it's just that feeling you don't get with a lot of the modern cars. Uh, these cars, these, the 355s also tend to have a bit of a cult following, uh, in large part because of the incredible sound they make. Uh, the engine on this car being right behind you and revving up high, it sounds amazing and it's a pretty awesome driving experience. If you guys are interested in seeing the top go up and down on one of these cars and the exact steps you have to go through, uh, we had a yellow 355, a paddle shift car a couple months ago that we did a video on. So find the link below and click that to watch the whole video to see uh, the movements of the top and some other specifications about these kind of cars. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, hit like, and stay tuned because we got a lot more videos coming out very soon.